Today we're going to be looking at some of the cool season crops I plan to grow for 2024. Some of them, like my brassicas, have actually already started in my grow room, and we'll be looking at transplanting some of those later today. Uh, they're not all to that stage yet, so the other ones I'm going to let grow on for a while, uh, but we'll take a look at that here after we go through these seeds. And my goal in April is to actually try to sell some plants at a yard sale. I've never done that before. Last year, I grew an excessive amount of tomatoes and peppers. I gave them to family and friends, took them into work. Uh, people said they were some of the best plants I'd ever had. So I'm really excited. I really want to try to, you know, recoup some of the investment in gardening because it does take a little bit of money. The price of buying a package of seed versus buying the individual vegetable at the store is, you know, there's no comparison. If you have a little bit of dirt, you can plant the seed out totally recommend you try doing that it doesn't take a lot whatever space you have whatever resources you have uh please consider gardening because i cannot tell i started last year for the first time in a very long time uh before i had no idea what i was doing so it didn't work out very well but last year i had a lot of success and i cannot even begin to tell you how much joy and it, it gave me to be able to help nature do what it does best, which is grow. Just going out and, and seeing the seedlings just get bigger and bigger and the fruit develop and ripen. It was, it was elating just to, to see that and to be a part of that and to watch that happen. So I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend and encourage you to, to take up, even if you're living in an apartment, you can get small containers or grow bags Grow a couple of seeds, grow, grow some herbs even. Just have some containers on a, a sill, a windowsill in your house. Uh, you don't have to get into expensive grow lights or even shop lights. You don't have to have expensive bookcases or wire shelving. You just need a little bit of dirt, a little bit of seed, a little bit of water, and some tender love. Uh, maybe a little fertilizer. Please consider it if you haven't started gardening. And if you have, uh, let me know down in the comments what type of vegetables you like to grow, flowers too. Uh, this year I'll be growing quite a lot more flowers. So what I have already started are my brassicas, which include my cabbage, my kohlrabi, cauliflower, broccolis, and cabbage. So let me show you the types that I'm working with. So I grew this one last year. It's a red acre cabbage. It's a 75 day maturity. Uh, start indoors six to eight weeks before last frost. I'm a little early, but I'm hoping again to sell some of these at a yard sale in April. Savoy cabbage, uh, it is also six to eight weeks. It does have a longer maturity date, 80 to 100 days. So this will take a little bit longer. This is a new one for me, Mammoth Red Rock cabbage. It's a 90 day maturity. Early Jersey Wakefield cabbage. Started some of these last year and I just looked out there today and I'm absolutely shocked because these are still growing. We had a week, like most people did, uh, back at the end of January, early February, where the temperature got down to one or two degrees for a couple of nights. I still have corn marsh growing. I still have kale growing, which just doesn't surprise me. Carrots look like they're growing, and the cabbage looks like it's added new leaves because we've had fairly warm weather for the last week and a half. So I'll, I'll show you guys that here in a minute once we go through these seeds. That's absolutely floored that the cabbage looks like it survived. I didn't think it would survive under 20 degrees. But anyway, so I have early Jersey Wakefield. This is one I started from seed, but I got it in very early. Uh, so it didn't come to a head. I also got some of this at the local grocery store. Uh, again, it was really late in the season. It didn't fully head up. But it does, they have tiny little cabbage heads in them right now. And while the outer leaves did take damage, the inner core is, I swear, is bigger. So I'm leaving it in there. Like I said, it's February 11th, and we'll just see what happens. I've got a few months before I need to turn that bed over to warm season. Crop, so we're going to give it a try. I'm growing two other cabbage that I've not done before. We have Copenhagen Market, just 65-day maturity, so similar to the Green Acre which uh, I actually don't have out here. So I have green acre cabbage growing as well. Uh, but it, uh, the Copenhagen market 
uh, is a 65 day maturity as is the green acre cabbage, which I'm growing. And then the last one is the late flat Dutch cabbage. This is a 100 day maturity, so it'll be a little longer in the beds, take another month and a half or so. So really excited to see what we have for that. Uh, I will be trying, which I did actually harvest a little bit of pak choy back in the fall. I had no luck with it in the spring. I did get some in the fall. It is a 60 day maturity uh, and it tastes a lot like cabbage. Uh, so it is really good. It was more of a leaf version versus the rounded head of the cabbage. Uh, so really good in stir fries and other uh, are steamed like that. So it was really good. It tasted a lot like cabbage if you've not had it before. I'm also going to try two different types or colors of kohlrabi, which I did grow these last year. They had pretty good heads on them. Uh, one of them actually looked like a little alien. I took a picture of it. I can find it, I'll put it on the screen. Uh, but it looked like a little Martian alien coming to land. It was really, really, really cute. Uh, but we're gonna do green and purple, uh, or white and purple kohlrabi. This is a 55 to 60 day maturity. The rest of the brassicas are cauliflower and types of ro uh, broccoli. Whoops. So and most of these seeds are from my gardener. They had a really good sale at the end of last fall. They were a dollar a package. Uh, so I invested quite a bit with that. Uh, like I said, you can get seeds cheap. Seeds do not expire. Their germination rate will decline over time. But for most, that is years, not just one year. They have to have a date on the package so that the, they can't sell you seed that is older. Uh, it's more of a consumer protection. So I have self blanching cauliflower. I did plant this last year, but I started it so late in the season that I never made a cauliflower before the harlequin bugs attacked it. So we're going to get this out in the garden early this year. And I'm going to try to cover everything with tulle fabric and get ahead of the bugs because they were they were pain in the butt last year. Another one I'm going to be doing this year is a Romanesco broccoli. It's really intriguing looking. It's kind of an architectural cauliflower that's green maybe. I don't know. I'm, worth, I'm going to give it a, a try. Forms heads of cauliflower-like florets. They're conical pattern and does not form side shoots like traditional broccoli. So it's more like a regular cauliflower, but it's, it's green. I, I have seen this listed as, as uh, Romanesco cauliflower in other areas or other places. So we're gonna give this a try. This is a 65 day maturity. One of the problems I had last year was being too afraid to put crops out early enough or not start them early enough for the fall. So I had a timing issue that I'm gonna try to fix this year. Hey, Robin just landed like two feet from me. Holy crap. Hi. Okay. We can do this once more. <laughs> All right. So one of the problems I had last year with some of my uh, early season crops and also my late fall crops was that I was too afraid to get them, set them out early in the spring. So in March, just afraid it was too cold. Some of the stuff needed to go out there. Also with the fall crops, I was, didn't get it started inside early enough and didn't get it outside early enough. Uh, I had tried to, to uh, start cabbage in the fall. I set it out on the front porch, which is southwest facing. Uh, it stunted because it was too hot and too much sun, and I just didn't take care of it fast enough. So I'm gonna start a lot of my fall season crops inside. I'm also gonna do fall tomatoes, and I'll start those inside as well with the grow lights, just so I have a lot more control over the temperature and the amount of light they have so they don't get toasty and crispy because that doesn't work well. So anyway, we're gonna give the purple sprouting broccoli another try. I did plant it in the fall, but again, it wasn't early enough. It says to start at eight weeks before outdoor planting. Um, direct snow, or direct sow, early spring after frost or midsummer for fall harvest. So we're gonna try that for spring and for our fall. The other broccoli, which I also have never tried before, is the spring rapini broccoli rob. This is a 65 day maturity. Uh, also is cold tolerant. Uh, so we're gonna give this one a try as, and see how it goes. My preference for broccoli is actually not the flower heads. 
the florets. I like the stems. So having more stems actually works well for me. Uh, they call them broccoli coins, or at least that, that's what I've heard them called. And they're actually sweeter. So I like the, the broccoli stems. You guys can have the bro broccoli florets. I'll take the stems. The last one that I've started inside uh, for this season is the American Purple Top Rutabaga. I actually still have a couple of these in the garden that I think, again, got them in too late for fall. They weren't ready to pick, but they're growing. I think they're about ready to, to pick. I think they survived the one and two degree weather we had. So I'm going to give, give those maybe another week because we have fairly decent temperatures for the next week. And then I might pull them out, roast them up with some potatoes in the air fryer. Uh, this is a uh, 65 day maturity. And I do believe well, I saw someone say that you could start these inside, so I started a few of them. Most of them, though, I will be planning out directly because uh, it does say back here to direct sell when soil is workable, which honestly, we are workable at this point. Uh, I'm in zone 6A in northeastern or north central Kentucky. Uh, our ground usually doesn't freeze because we don't stay cold enough for a long enough period of time. So while our temperature will go down, sometimes even below zero, uh, it doesn't stay that low for long enough for the ground to freeze. So our, that might be why the cabbage and the rutabaga and some of the other stuff that I still have out there isn't, hasn't died yet. Just honestly, completely surprised. So we'll get this out there, um, both in the try to transplant, see how that goes, and the direct sow it. So the other items that I'm going to be planting later this month, just February, or into early part of March, are some carrots. I'm going to try the tender sweet carrot. I'm going to try this one from Baker Creek called Corral. Never tried it before. It's an eight to nine inch long, uh, free splitting on, or free of splitting, uh, even when it grows in heavier soil. So I'll give this a try. I've not done that one before. The Danvers 126 is one of the ones I do have out there in the garden still. So hopefully that they'll continue to grow. And then we'll plant some more here probably in late February. And then the other one is the Nantes Half Long Carrot. So this is a very traditional carrot. And we'll go ahead and get this one out as well. The last spring, I tried to plant some uh, of the snap peas, the ones that you eat the whole pod. Uh, they didn't do well, and I'm not sure why. They just kind of died, turned white, or they turned white, died. Uh, so I started them again in the fall in a grow bag with a trellis, and I did two different kinds. I did the flat, like the snow pea, and then I did the round sugar and pea. Now, the flat snow pea, I didn't care for it, much more bitter. The sugar and pea actually was really sweet. It had a really good flavor. So I've got two that I'm going to try this year. They're both of the rounded peas, uh, sugar and, and sweet gem. So it says to plant them, direct sow them as soon as the soil is workable. So I'm going to go ahead and probably get these in late February. Uh, and then I can plant them again six to eight weeks prior to the first fall frost. So I did, like I said, I did get the sugar and pea. It's really, really good. Uh, the vines went kind of crazy. And it produced quite a few because I only had a couple plants. Two of the ones I'm going to try this year are the Purple Plum Radish and the Cherry Bell Radish. And they're 25 and 28 day maturity. So we'll get these out soon as well. The last item that I'm going to be planting out early this season for the spring uh, cool season are some lettuces. We're going to do black seeded Simpson lettuce, which is 40 day maturity. Rail sa Red Sales Leaf Lettuce, which is a 50 day maturity. Freckles Romaine lettuce, which I did do last year in the spring. Uh, harvested off of it. Some of it went to seed. Uh, I let it do that and it self seeded itself all over that bed. Uh, it was really, really good. Grew all of last fall from the self seeding. And then I think there are still actually some out there. It doesn't look like it completely burnt during or froze during the one and two degree weather. So I'm hopeful it, it really looks like it's still alive and growing. So I'm gonna leave it there for a while and just see what it does. Uh, but it's a really good, it's a six to eight inch head lettuce uh, and a really, really cold tolerant. Obviously if it survives one degree 
weather, uh, but very, very hardy uh, lettuce. And then the final one I'm going to do is the little gem lettuce, a little gem butterhead lettuce. It's a 50 day maturity, four to six inch head. I haven't done this one, so I'm really excited to see how that is and give it a try. So let me take you over to look at the cabbage and just give you an idea of what it looks like. Uh, and then we're going to go and uh, separate some of the seedlings out into their own trays. So hang on, and we'll be right back. Okay, so here's one of the heads of cabbage that I have. And you can see this is brand new growth here. So they did take quite a bit of damage on the external portions, but they have new leaves starting and they're really fresh. So there's still life, I think, in these cabbages. So yeah, overall, they did take quite a bit of damage to the exterior leaves the older leaves, but each one of them that is there still has a very strong center and they are putting on, do appear to be putting on new leaves. And in this bed, we have kale on the left-hand side. Down the center, we have carrots. And on the right side, corn mosh. This is a bed with their freckles romaine lettuce. It still looks like it's alive. And just for a quick garden update, we have hard, uh, hard nut garlic growing and some soft nut garlic. And an old elephant garlic over on this side. And I'm going to be out here soon uh, once it's not raining so much. We have a good day where the, the ground's not quite so wet. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get these beds cleaned up and get the drip irrigation back situated in there. Here are the brassicas that I've already started. Not all of them are ready to be separated, but we're gonna go ahead with a few of the bigger ones. Go ahead and try to separate them into their own pots. And what I'm using is a Whitney Farms organic potting soil. Now that these have sprouted, we don't need to use the seed starting mix anymore. So what I did is I took this first cell out and I teased, I'm teasing these apart and I'm going to put one plant per cell. A little hole there, gently stick that down and cover it up. Okay. And then I need to also mark down one of uh, I have a garden marker, which is UV, uh, not as UV sensitive as a Sharpie marker. So using a Sharpie marker on your garden labels isn't a great idea because they will fade fairly quickly. So this is the golden acre. I think I said green acre earlier. That's a TV show. So golden acre cabbage. And Okay. I'm going to go ahead and finish the, this section up and then we'll go on to the next one. And you want to t t tamp it down a little bit, but you don't want to squish it. The roots need to be in contact with the soil, but you don't want to completely compress all of the air pockets in there. So from two of these little cells, I got 16 plants. So that's really good. I think for these, I'm gonna go ahead and leave those and probably I'm gonna work on the red acre cabbage next. I don't think that they're all ready to transplant. I might do the kohlrabi after that and maybe some of this early dirt. Well, that's actually by itself. So we'll leave that one. So right, we'll do the red acre cabbage, the mammoth cabbage, these two cells, and then this kohlrabi, and I think that the rest of them will leave for a few days and see how they, they do.
Just a quick overview of what we did. We have golden acre cabbage, red acre cabbage, mammoth red cabbage, and white kohlrabi, and Copenhagen cabbage. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope this inspired you to get some cold season crops going for your own garden. Uh, they're actually very easy to grow as long as you get the timing right. I'm really excited to see what this year brings. So thank you for joining me and have a wonderful day. And if you haven't, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like this video.